Contestant number five, are you ready? I'm ready. Excellent. Contestant number five, I see your camera is on and your microphone is operational. Please take the time to pin the timer and confirm that you have done so. Timing pinning is complete. Excellent. Contestant number five, James Hammonds. Let us be free. Let us be free, James Hammonds. My four children, my wife Yvonne, and myself headed south to connect with our roots. In Tennessee, we trace the steps of our ancestors who had to leave that great state in the middle of the night for fear of a white mob that was coming to burn their home and kill them. Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, we arrived at the family farm and Aunt Quinesta, who was living there all alone, greeted us with a big smile and a big country dinner. That night, we stayed up way past midnight, talking about the land, the old one room house that was still on the farm, talked about the apple trees and the smokehouse out back that was used to cure dead pigs, or killed pigs. And she told us about the, her father and the other members of the community who had built a church on the other side of the road. That next morning, we got up, the children, my wife, Aquinesta, and headed north on this dusty road. Stop, stop, my wife shouted. Put my foot on the brake. She jumped out the car, ran into this open field, came back and put it in front of the kid's face. See, see, it's a cotton plant. The children weren't excited about that. But I couldn't help but think about the hundreds, thousands of black souls that had worked to pick cotton from sunup to sundown their entire lives. We crossed the Mississippi River into Memphis, headed for the Lorraine Motel, site of the Civil Rights Museum. There we saw murals of people marching against segregation and discrimination. We saw pictures of the strange fruit, black men hanging from trees. We saw a replica of the bus that Rosa Parks sat in to start the bus boycott. And we saw young men and women at a lunch counter not being served by the white waitress and being beaten by the other patrons. Next, we went upstairs to the room that Martin Luther King had stayed in. That's the bed that Martin stayed in, I told the children. Perhaps 
he was dreaming or thinking about Coretta and his children, not knowing that this would be his last night. I looked past the bed, past the curtains, past the open door, and I could see Martin on the balcony looking down at the street. Boom! A shot is fired, and Martin falls dead. We left the museum and headed for this home that was part of the Underground Railroad. A white family would hide out black slaves in their basement until they could be carried off to a free state. I went down into the basement and I could feel their presence. They were huddled on the cold floor of this basement, whispering to God, let us be free. The slaves that were left behind, their great, great grandchildren were beaten by police on bloody Sunday at the Edmund Pettus Bridge. But when they got up and marched to Selma, they cried out, let us be free. And their great, great, great grandchildren today, tired of seeing their brethren shot and killed by police officers are marching with white and brown persons from all over the world under the banner, Black Lives Matter. And they're shouting the same refrain, let us be free. Mr. Contest Master, 